on the line with us is our old buddy Ian Milheiser, the uh, attorney. He's uh, an author, uh, senior correspondent, in fact, uh, over at Vox News, VOX.com. He's also the author of a book, The Agenda, How a Republican Supreme Court is Reshaping America. And boy, are they doing it. Ian, uh, oh, I'm Milheiser on Twitter, by the way. So, Ian, welcome back to the program. It's been a while since we've spoken. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad you could, you could join us today because um, there's a lot of Supreme Court news uh, to talk about. The thing that you wrote about over at Vox.com, uh, the, head, the headline is the judiciary's three-year-long three harassment campaign against a Black Lives Matter leader. This, is, this goes way beyond just harassing a, a, a leader of a, of a movement. This, this could stifle our First Amendment right to peaceably assemble and petition our government for redress of grievances, in other words, protest. Or am I, am I misreading this? No, you're, you're not misreading. I mean, th this is a fairly shocking attack on the First Amendment right to protest. So this is a case, it's been through four different courts right now. The, the, the last court to, to have hands on it was the Louisiana Supreme Court, but it's been up to the U.S. Supreme Court. It's been to a bunch of different courts that keep passing around like a hot potato. And the issue here is, so DeRay McKesson is a fairly prominent um, Black Lives Matter activist. You know, a lot of people probably see him on TV. He's been on this show. For wearing, oh, yeah, he's a good, good guy. You know, if, if you see him on TV, he's the guy who wears the blue vest all the time. Yep. Um, and uh, DeRay organized a protest in Baton Rouge after police shot a man down there and killed a man down there. And um, during the course of that protest, someone who is not DeRay, apparently threw a rock at a cop and, 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 and injured the cop. And I, and I don't want to you know, diminish the magnitude of, of what happened there. I mean, I, I think that it's a terrible tragedy that this happened to this police officer. I think if we can find the person who threw the rock, that person should be, should be prosecuted. But the important thing to know about that person is that he is not DeRay McCaskill. She is not DeRay McCaskill. So we don't know who that person is. We know it's not DeRay. A very conservative federal appeals court, the, the United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit, held that the cop was allowed to sue DeRay nonetheless because DeRay organized the protest. And if that decision stands and the Supreme Court had a chance to knock it out and they didn't take it, if that, if that decision stands, what it means is that we basically can't have protests anymore because if the organizer of a protest can be held liable for the actions of any person who attends the protest. No one's going to organize a protest. No one's going to feel safe organizing a protest. You know, you, you go to all the work to bring 100,000 people to a march, and if any one of them does something illegal, all of a sudden you, the organizer, are on the hook for that. Like, you, you just can't have the First Amendment right to protest under those circumstances. Right. And so, you know, I'm hoping the Supreme Court steps in at some point and says, no, this, this is wrong. There's a right to protest. Well, they've already but they've already they've already ruled that in the past, but we've got a whole brand new court now that seems to be throwing out precedent willy nilly. Exactly, and that and that's what's so concerning about this. So, this issue came up in the 1980s. There was a boycott organized by a Mississippi chapter of the NAACP, and the facts are pretty much the same. There there was you know there was a, a boycott that was organized by the NAACP and by NAACP leaders. Um, missed someone, there were some people who were involved in the boycott who were not the leaders of it, who were not the organizers of it, who were not the NAACP, they were just individual protest attendees who engaged in acts of violence. And the state tried to hold the NAACP and the NAACP's leaders accountable for the action of individuals involved in the protest. And the Supreme Court said no. Right. That's not allowed, like, unless you can show that the leaders actually encouraged people to engage in violence, then you can't hold the... Yeah, the otherwise, if, if, if somebody, yeah. somebody's organizing, even if it's a protest, say the, the you know, the, the Proud Boys were organizing one of their semi-regular riots in Portland, um, all I'd have to do is show up as if I was with them and commit a crime, assault somebody, and that somebody that I assaulted could then sue the leader of the Proud Boys, and that would be the end of that. Um, I mean, this, this cuts all different ways. You know, everybody, exactly. either everybody has the right to protest or nobody has the right to protest. Now, Ian, I'm guessing that the logic that is being employed here is similar to the notion that if you drive the getaway car and one of the bank robbers 
shoots and kills a cop on the, in the process of, of robbing the bank, you are just as guilty of murder as the guy who was inside the building with the gun. I, I, am I getting that right? Is that, is that the kind of logic that's coloring this? Because you don't have a First Amendment right to rob a bank. Yeah, so that's actually not the logic. I mean, like, that, what, what you're describing is called felony murder, and felony murder, like, normally the legislature actually passes a statute saying that if you're the getaway driver, you, you can be charged with murder. In this case, what the Fifth Circuit said is they said, essentially, if you're a protest leader and you lead people to break any law at all, then you're responsible for any legal violation that occurs. So in this case, what happened was DeRay led the protesters onto a public street. And there's apparently a Louisiana state law saying that you can't block a street. Right. And so they, they, they basically charged him with a traffic violation and then used that traffic violation to piggyback in all of the other stuff that happened. And, you know, the, the, the problem with that rationale is that it, you know, it means that basically any protest leader can be charged. You know, did you did you speed while you were driving to the protest? Did you park in a no parking zone? Did you tell someone else to park in in, in a no parking zone? You know, did, did you advise someone at the protest to double like any minor violation? Did you jaywalk during the course of the protest? Right. Can then be used to piggyback in all of these other offenses. It, 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 it's a really stunning attack on the First Amendment. Yeah, so keep an eye on this one. Um, also, uh, today, the Supreme Court, in, in, with their so-called shadow docket, this yeah. unsigned opinion, um, said that this uh, Trump, you know, during the Trump administration, they had promulgated a rule that made it easier for big corporations to dump their poisonous waste into our waterways and poison people downstream. And I, and I remember, you know, early on, this was in the first year of the Trump administration, my recollection, that, you know, Trump was bragging about this. This was a big gift for the coal industry. And, and the, the Supreme Court has essentially said to the Biden administration, you can't get rid of that regulation. Do I have this right? So, so what the Supreme Court did here is really bizarre. So what happened is in, in 2020, like in the final month of the Trump administration, the Trump EPA put out a rule that weakened the Clean Water Act a little ah, bit. Okay. And then the Biden administration came in, and one of the first things that they said is, we're going to review that rule, we're going to write a new rule. And like what I imagine they're eventually going to do is they're going to restore the old rule that had been in effect for the 50 years before Trump got his hands on it. But it takes time. There's a whole process. It's called notice and comment that you have to go through to change a federal regulation. So the new rule probably isn't going to be out until 2023. And a federal judge at some point along the way, like several months ago, struck down the Trump rule. So what the Supreme Court did here is they basically stepped in and said, we're going to put that Trump rule back in place, but only for a few months. Like, you know, eventually Biden's going to announce the new rule and, you know, maybe the court will come up with some new ridiculous reason to strike the new rule down. But the Biden administration's already said it's, it's getting rid of this rule. Right. So I, I just. Well, we've I got I mean, you know, Gorsuch's mom uh, tried to destroy the environmental protection he granted under Reagan. And Amy, Amy Coney Barrett's dad was a lawyer for, correct me if I'm wrong, it was Shell for most of his career. You know, an oil industry lawyer. I, I guess not, but like, I guess. I mean, John Roberts is opposed to this decision. He, if yeah, he was in dissent. I, I, I guess what it, what did surprise me about this decision is this is penny anti stuff. Like, yeah. we're not talking about like the the grand meaning of the Clean Water Act. We're talking about what the rule is going to be for the next six or seven months or so. Right. And in the past, this, like when the Supreme Court gets involved in that kind of penny ante stuff, what they're doing is they're signaling to every right wing lawyer in the country, like, hey, if you don't like, like anything at all that has happened out there in any court, come to us and we might bail you out. Right. And that's and that's and without a decision, without arguments, without pleadings, without front of the court briefs um, and, and with no an explanation. explanation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, this this is just mind boggling. They, and, and, I don't even know why they did this. I might agree with it if they gave me an explanation. Yeah, I, I, I get it. Why they did it, Ian? We just we just we just have a little less than two minutes left before we're going to hit a hard break here. I, I I wanted to just jump off that to the to Neil Gorsuch's uh, premise 
that if the Environmental Protection Agency is going to say regulate arsenic in the in the water, that the law that was written by Congress has to say, uh, EPA, you must regulate arsenic in the water to less than 0.15 parts per billion or whatever. That, that the Congress must pass it, that individual regulatory agencies don't actually have the constitutional power to do that sort of thing. Um, is that growing? I mean, is that a, a sentiment that has gone beyond Gorsuch? Yeah, I mean, this there's appear to be five or six votes for this proposition. So, I mean, and that I would end all support. regulatory agencies, basically. Yeah, and or, like, or like, cripple them explain, anyway. Yeah, like just explain like a bit about what's going on here. So, like, there's all sorts of statutes that that like you know. So, the Congress typically doesn't write a law and say, "Here's the list of poisons you can't dump in the water." What they do is they say, we want to make sure that things that are toxic aren't dumped into the water. And it's the job of the EPA to figure out what all the toxins are that we don't want dumped in the water and to ban them. Right. And if you take away the EPA's power to do that, first of all, the law just becomes a lot less dynamic because every time a new poison comes along, Congress has to pass a new bill. But more than that, it means that all of these existing laws that we have, which were written under the assumption that Congress could say to the EPA, come up with a list of poisons, they go away, and there's no longer any existing protection to make sure no one's dumping poison in our water. Yeah, and so the United States becomes a third world nation overnight. I mean, it's, it's grim what's going on at the Supreme Court. It, 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 is, it, it is grim. It is grim because they aren't explaining themselves, and then when they do explain themselves, it's often so hyper-technical that, you know, you need to hire a lawyer to figure out what they just did. Right, or, or just said, uh, yeah, amen. It's, it's very, very troubling. Ian Milheiser, his book, uh, The Agenda, How a Republican Supreme Court is Reshaping America, Vox.com, he's a senior correspondent, I'm Milheiser on Twitter. Ian, thanks so much for dropping by. It's great talking with you.